Back with Football in Focus for a Thursday night. Shane's Rib Shack uh, getting set for another high school game this week and some other games in the area this week. Got Western Guilford and Southern Guilford. They'll be in with us tonight. Going to be talking first of all with Kevin Guessman from Western Guilford. He's a running back, linebacker, kicker, kind of a do-all type man. And uh, you've been following the Stadnett brothers. Let's talk about them first before we talk too much about Western Guilford. Stadnett brothers have been following those guys. been doing well. Yes, sir. I've been pretty good friends with them ever since they went to Western, even before that. But you been had a chance to watch any of their games? Yeah. Yeah, my, actually, my older brother goes to South Carolina. He's a junior down there, so I go as often as I can. So you get to make the trip down and watch the games live then? Yeah, down in Columbia. It's a really cool stadium. It's a does good atmosphere. Kind of, does that kind of get your interest level up? So, well, I would love to be in a situation like that one day yourself. Definitely. Yeah. Well, you got the possibilities. I mean, you're doing the uh, backfield like a running back, like a linebacker, kicker, punter. You do a little bit of everything. How do you get in good enough shape to do all those different things and stay on the field that much? Um, it's hard. A lot of practice all summer. How were those summer workouts? What were you doing this past summer to get ready? Uh, pretty tough. Just eight in the mornings. Mm. Every day this summer we got at it. Did you uh, go to Western to do these workouts? Were you training out at another place on your own? How'd that work out? Yes, sir. Mostly just out at Western. We had the whole team out there. Have a pretty good turnout as far as number of players that came for the workouts this summer? Yeah, we did. We did. Not bad. Did you uh, have like a system set up with you guys, make X amount of workouts and kind of a team type goal for a number of guys to be there for X amount of workouts, try to get everybody there as much as you could? We, I mean, we just tried to get as many people as we could. How many did you miss? <laughs> uh, I actually I missed a couple because I was playing a summer lacrosse team. Oh. So we were traveling a lot for that. Team Carolina, we played up in like, Massachusetts for a couple weeks. Kind of get off the subject here a little bit too as we talk about football, football in focus, Shane's Rivers, I kind of make it sports in focus. How does the lacrosse kind of play into what you're doing now? Does that kind of affect your football as far as maybe your decision goes several years down the road about what to do? Would it be lacrosse or football? Is the lacrosse way pretty heavy in your athletic schedule? Um, during the spring, it does. I try to focus completely on football and do everything I can. Have you had pretty good success with lacrosse too? Yes, sir. I made up this Team Carolina team was exciting to be on, be a part of. And as far as the football goes, this is your junior year, correct? Yes, sir. Did you pick up any honors last year? I know you made a lot of tackles. I've seen your name register for a lot of the tackles and had I was, good success. Yeah, I was all conference and honorable mention all area as a linebacker. Not bad. That was back in the uh, Metro 40 days too, right? Yes, sir. Good deal. Good deal. So you already made the all conference team, made the all district team honorable mention. What kind of goals do you have for this year? I mean, once you make a team like that, I mean, that's part of the battle, but I mean, you want to do even more. And, yeah. Because the more teams you make, it's like that job work resume when you show those colleges that, you know, what, what do you want to do this year as far as that goes? Um, well, from the ground up, I just want to keep improving, make more tackles, whatever i got to do. Maybe make that all-district team, like an all-county team, that type of thing? Even all-state would be awesome. Hey, I tell you, if I was a kid <laughs> in your position, if you could just make even honorable mention all-state, yeah, exactly. just get the name. I used to love to see the papers, see that uh, the names on all those all-football, all-basketball, baseball teams. Just see your name in there somewhere is a big plus. Yes, sir. How about the – I've been reading about the Shrine Bowl. The Shrine Bowl, you can't make it this year because you're only a junior, but the Shrine Bowl team is coming out thinking about a week or so. Would that be a goal, too, down the road? Definitely, for senior year, absolutely. Because yeah. you get a lot of exposure playing in that, too. Yeah. And then you got the East-West All-Star game coming up down the road also. Mm -hmm. That they We helped out at their practices. They had practices over at Western Guilford this summer. Right. We had a couple guys. So I've been around that a couple years. It would be a great experience to be able to play in it, though, down it, the road. It has got to be fun being around it, like you said, but playing. And Western's had pretty good success, too, with getting guys in that game, from what I hear. Yes, sir. We had, um, not this past year, but the year before, we had Mark Pettit yeah. playing it. And he plays at Charlotte now. He's, He's doing pretty well for himself, then, from what I hear. Yeah. Well, inaugural year, they're doing pretty well. What is he going? Is he going as a defensive end or as a linebacker? I'm pretty sure he's playing outside linebacker. I haven't been able to make one of his games yet, though, but definitely want to. I know you enjoyed it down at South Carolina watching the games down there. Is uh, Charlotte another team on your radar? Maybe a team you might look at. I know they're still a fairly new team. but even, I'm thinking now the first couple years is good because they're taking a lot of new players, but eventually they get a little crowded down there because everybody seems like they're flocking to Charlotte now. But is that a team you're thinking about? Yeah, I'm thinking about that. I went to um, a couple camps this summer. I went to Wake Forest, okay. and I went to North Carolina. And I have, a, I have another brother that goes to North Carolina, so I've been thinking about them. I went to their game this past week versus ECU. Boy. 
I bet you wanted to jump in that game too, probably try to help them out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was definitely trying to help them yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> it seemed like that defense is struggling Sunday now. It seemed like it's uh, a lot of the weight being weighed on the defense's shoulders for their uh, lack of success so far this season. Yeah, and well, they definitely need to pick it up. Yeah, it's. A, I think a lot of it they're putting on the defensive line too. Yeah, we'll see what they can do this week against Virginia Tech. Well, they, I mean, they're going to need to do something probably pretty quick because if yeah. they drop that game, they'll go to one and four, and then they've still got teams like NC State and then I guess Duke probably knocking on the door for later on too. Yes. Some big games this week. We'll talk about that maybe later some too. The UNC Virginia Tech game. You got the NC State Wake Forest game. And Duke is off this week. East Carolina has got a big game against Middle Tennessee State. East Carolina's having a good year. They are, yeah. It was impressive to see them go at it against Carolina. I was not expecting that. We're talking off the sub. We haven't got to our context here much yet with Kevin Gaspin, Western Guilford. But since you were there, you saw it. I heard some of it. I listened to some of that game. I usually listen to more than I go see on Saturdays doing some extra work on the side. But uh, we impressed that East Carolina offense. I mean, 55 points. Yeah. They really, East Carolina took it to them from the gate. First quarter, they just got up on them real early. UNC had really just no chance to get back. All UNC could do, it seemed like to me, was just try to play catch up all day long. And you get down by 25, maybe 21, 30 points. That's all you can do. You keep scoring like a baseball game. You get down, say, 10 to 4, you can add on some runs. You're just not going to get back in the game. Yeah, it's tough. We've we've been in that situation a couple times this season. Yes, you have. Yeah. I mean, you were kind of in that situation. Let me get to that because you keep bringing up good. I'm, I'm going to give you the question that you asked me about these. We'll talk about this. We're talking Kevin Guest from Western Guilford. A good. Uh, situation about that just out of my memory would be the Southwest Guilford game talking about getting behind kept coming back but not enough we've had that a problem. final was 49 42 right yeah we ended up losing by one touchdown yeah we, we could just get have a problem getting down early but we're trying to turn that around we I think we got down like 21 zero that game wow when in the halftime it was like 21 to 7 or something mm-hmm. we came back out maybe 20 even 28 7 we came back out and finally got things pulled together got down got Got it back to one touchdown. And just do you think it's the halftime talks, or is it mainly just the fact the team begins to get focused and finally? Are you guys start late starters? You think it takes you a while to get going? We're definitely late starters, but we def- we need to change that if we're gonna have some success in conference. Right, because now's the time. Because you won. Uh, I think you did win one conference game, right? No, we've only had that one was a, that was the Sun Reynolds game. Yeah, you yeah, that was scored Reynolds. huge that game. That was a game where you guys had all those frustrations bottled up, and so it's time to put some points on the board. Exactly. Then you came back the next week. I think that was last week. Week, right? Yeah, we played Ledford, and yeah. again, they got on us early. They scored a touchdown on their first offensive play of the game. Mm. So we were down 14-0 in the first quarter. So you did the same thing again last week, got down. Yeah, but then we took it right back at them, and we, in the halftime, was 21-14, we were winning. You were up. Yeah. We came back in the second half and didn't score a point, and got beat 28-21. That's kind of opposite of what you guys have been doing, too, yeah, in exactly. some ways. We, wow. We have... I think, just yet to put an entire game together. We've seen mm-hmm. glimpses of how good we really can be. We have a ton of skill, but just you've need got to put. You've got some talent. you got uh, Tevin Evans. you got Brian Guess. you got uh, Kevin Gessman, Kevin and Tevin. you got uh, the Bovion kid, the running back. He does a good job for you. Yeah, Rashad is a great running back. We also have Jamal, his older brother, is a senior. Mm-hmm. He plays middle linebacker with me. He's pretty good, too. And you got the uh, Keenan Stevens receiver. He's a good receiver for yeah, you. Keenan's yeah. real tall. He's Whenever. a great, great target. He, he is. For Tevin over here, he's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what's your role in the offense? We know you're playing linebacker on a defense, right? Yes, sir. Inside or outside? Inside linebacker. Inside, so you get right in the thick of all the meat where the happening is on defense. What's Definitely. your offensive role? Uh, I play a slot receiver, but our formations, when we move around a little bit, I end up in the backfield. I end up at some tight end. Yeah. Coach calls, he called that man. Maybe either an H back, Y back, X back, something like that. <laughs> well, I pretty much switch between all three of them. X, Y, Z then. <laughs> gotcha. Kevin Gaspin with us, and we'll get back to our context here. We've had some good conversation with Kevin already. Shane's Reeves check on a Thursday night. What do you expect out of Southern Guilford? Let's get down to, uh, you know, we talked about everything but so far your opponent. What so, about Southern Guilford for Friday? Well, I've been watching as much as I can on him. Seems we got number 25, mm-hmm. Reggie, which is 
He's going to be a good player. Time. Try to stop him. We'll see what Try, we can do from there. He tries to do so much. It's sometimes like Southern Guilford's reached the stage of their season, the way things have gone for them. They have to use Reggie so much in so many different situations. Sometimes I've heard fans watching a the game, they almost want to jump in a game and try to jump in and try to stop him too. He's sometimes that effective. Yeah. Well, I mean, our whole defense pretty much can't focus on him anymore. Yeah. Make somebody else show up tomorrow night. 11 men to the ball, and uh, the ball is in the hands of number 25. Exactly. And I think last week they scored one touchdown against North Forsyth, got beat 9-7. to seven. They're feeling some of the same woes you guys are. Yeah. Lose those tight, close games. One touchdown, and Reggie, I think in that one, out of all the crazy things, if I read that box score, he threw the touchdown pass out of craziness. It wouldn't doubt it. seems like he's doing it all for them. I and the kid's good. only a junior. Yeah. Same he's class you're in, so you guys will see each other again. He's going to be a good player. I'm excited to go against him for two years. Good to know that guy. It's fun to tackle the same guy like that, be able to focus on a guy like that for a couple of years. Yeah. You know what to expect. Got to get normal a little bit, too. Yeah. Look at some other things with Kevin Guestman. Uh, why do you need this win tomorrow night? Um, taking it into conference. We started conference last week. Went in one and four. Wanted to see what we can do. Think we're going to be pretty good. We're dropping down to 3A this year. Yeah, the expectations were huge going in, Definitely. and you guys got a little bit of a slow start. Dropping the Moorhead game didn't help any because mm -hmm. everybody thought Moorhead was going to be a slouch this year, which they turned out not to be a slouch. Last check, last week, they were about 3-3, three and three, so a much better team than people expected. But again, like you said, get down to 3A. This is going to be where we can – I think right now I may be wrong, and my vision is decent, better, far away now than it used to be. But anyway, kind of looking down the road, I see you guys being a better team maybe about a year from now. If everybody can just be patient, you got so many – young players on this team, the possibilities are very good for the future. But you really, the fans and everybody else around the team got to be patient. Uh, I think as soon as we start putting all the pieces together, which we've, again, seen signs of, we're going to start winning games and see what we can do this year. I think we can be pretty close to the top of our conference. We've got uh, Kevin Gessman with us. We've got uh, Tevin standing by for us, Tevin Evans. We've got Don Moore with us. Don's going to give a couple of cards here, too, to our Southern Guilford players. They just entered the house. They can probably grab some food while we talk to our Western guys. Don will identify to DreamsboroSports.com. Good to have the Southern Guilford Storm players in the house. And big game tomorrow night between the Storm and the Hornets. Good to have the guys all together here this evening and talking with Kevin Gaspin right now. Do you think the game will be close? I think it will be a good game, yeah. It should be a tight game. Maybe the night when the defense may have to really step up. Yeah, for both sides. Took the words right out of my mouth, both sides, <laughs> absolutely. Your best game so far this season? Um, Reynolds. It was a pretty much an offensive-minded game. I scored four touchdowns. Oh, my gosh. I remember that game. Now I looked in the paper. I used to see you kicking the extra points, Gessman kick, and all of a sudden here's Gessman scoring all those touchdowns. Yeah. What, how did that uh, eruption occur? Well, Tevin started throwing me the ball, got open a couple times. Got in your hands? A couple 30-yard, I don't know how much, touchdowns and two receivers. Receiving touchdowns, two running touchdowns, and had to turn around and kick my own extra point. Wow, that keeps you busy. Like we talked about before, we talked about guys going both ways. With Kevin, he goes all ways, not both ways, all ways. The punting, the kicking, linebacker, uh, running back. Caught two touchdowns, ran for two touchdowns. Nobody can argue you weren't involved in the all faces of the offense that night, right? Yes, sir. That's a great night for you. Had to be a good one there. Yeah, Are you more of a speed merchant or more of a power runner? I love, love to see both sides of these runners. A little bit of both, I'd say. Probably more power. We have some speed guys that run the ball a little bit more than me. Is uh, Rashad Bovion more of a speedster? Yeah, I think so. Hits the outside? He, he cut. He has some great vision. Mm -hmm. See the hole and Seize just hit it. the field. Yes, yeah. sir. Well, if you're uh, Strength. How much do you weigh, probably? About 205, 210. So you carry about 210 into the line on those hard hits anyway, so you don't mind running inside against all the big bodies. No, I, I enjoy it. I wonder if you'll be saying the same thing about 30 years now. I'll still enjoy it. <laughs> you wonder about that, because I was a younger guy. I thought, gosh, that's the best thing in the world, just run into people, knock people over, try to flatten people. Sometimes it seems like you spend too much time trying to bowl them over. Maybe we need to try to outrun these guys. Who knows? Yeah, well, it's fun to be on both sides of it. Oh, yeah. It's fun to be able to do both. Yeah. You're not on the track team, too, or you know you do lacrosse. Yeah, I play lacrosse. Well, lacrosse, you got to almost be like a track store anyway. You run so much in that sport, right? Yeah. You course. may as well be playing uh, soccer in the spring, playing lacrosse as much as you guys run. Yeah. Uh, looking around, some of other questions for you tonight. Uh, The field at Western Guilford, let me ask you this question. You may not know anything about this. They're naming the field tomorrow night, the Joe Robinson Field. Have you heard about the ceremony for that, anything about that? Hey, have you ever heard of Joe Robinson? Not too much about it. He's the guy that died 
He did. He got a year ago, yeah. Not bad. Good. I like people that did their research, keep up with current events. So you remember Coach Robinson passing away. He was a history teacher, football coach there for yeah. a while. So you remember a little bit about Coach Robinson. A little bit, yes. You ever hear the name Doug Henderson? Yeah. Henry, so you remember that? Coach Causey's head coach. Yeah. <laughs> coach Causey let you guys know that a few times, huh? Yeah, yes. A couple coach personal Causey. stories. Yeah, Coach Causey probably does it to Coach Henderson way too, I would think. He said he's trying not to be quite as <laughs> quite as aggressive as old Coach Henderson. Mm -hmm. Wow. What about uh, Coach Charlie Griffin? Remember that name? No, I'm not, he not was sure. the one that followed up after Coach Henderson. I think okay. Charlie Griffin coached Anthony Saunders. You may have heard of Anthony yeah, Saunders. Heard I think answer. he's got like the school record, most rushing yards yeah, in so. a career, all those playing in North Carolina. But you're kind of for me. Anyway, you got a little bit of insight about that for tomorrow night. What have you learned from Coach Causey? What's Coach Causey taught you? Um, a ton. He's just a great guy all around. Good character. He holds all, all the players to the same. But he played linebacker when he went to Western. So mm -hmm. it's just awesome to follow in his footsteps. And he went on to play college at Carolina. So he's just got a great... I guess he holds you guys to a certain standard. To expect expectations from him are pretty strong, I would think. Yeah, definitely. Kevin Gessman with us from Western Guilford. Big game tomorrow against Southern Guilford. And... Uh, Who's your top rival these days? I'll leave that question out. I mean, you've had uh, teams over the years that were like, man, I'd love to play these guys. I'd like to play these guys 10 weeks out of the year. Who's, who's the top rival these days? Well, it's always been Northwest. That's what I was going to say, yeah, Northwest. We need to uh, get that game a little better. Yeah, been too tough lately against them. I think we've lost to them the last few years. We need to turn it around. We already lost to them earlier this year. Next year. Can you develop some kind of new from. rivalries in this uh, new conference, you Maybe think? Maybe this conference, yeah. We'll see how this year pans out. Southern might be good. good rival with those guys. It should be fun. A lot of history between those two teams going back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, most of the people at Western Guilford have probably already uh, gone on that were involved in any of those days back then. There may be some old timers around those, but that, that, back in the day, you had Southern Guilford, Western Guilford. Those was like the game of the year many moons ago. What about uh, these teams? Dudley, Southeast, Eastern Guilford. Which one goes unbeaten among those? That's only three unbeaten left in Guilford County. Now you got Dudley, Southeast, Eastern Guilford. Um, I think Dudley is a good team. We played them last year. I would like to play all three of those teams. We had all three on the schedule last year. Don't play either of them this year. Wow, that's East, interesting. Eastern, though, is a big surprise for me because they weren't that good last year. We played them, but now with their new coach and some, I guess some good players, it's exciting for them. With the Dudley matchup, I think we did your game, broadcast your game, I guess the past four or five years maybe with Dudley. Always, If I'm a Western player, I want to play Dudley. I want to play the better teams. The teams that these guys are supposed to be tough. We're supposed to be intimidated. Who cares? Let's go play yeah, these guys. It was definitely an exciting. Oh, a lot Last of fun. year we, we played them on their homecoming with a huge oh crowd gosh. and ended up losing in the fourth quarter. It had to be a great it, experience it was there. A, it was a heck of a game. Yeah, that was a close game. Remember that last year? Because yeah. you guys were not expected to do a lot against them. You went in there and took them to the max. Yeah, we were up the whole game and just they ended up throwing a touchdown at the very end, literally last minute. You know, Western's had some offense like that the past couple of years on occasions where they could put some points on the board. And I, yeah, I remember that game. It's coming back even more now. That game was crazy because you guys did have that lead. I'm thinking it's like a mental return now, watching that game back in the back of my mind at Dudley last year. That game keeps coming back because you guys were scoring. Going, what in the world is going on here? And yeah. then Dudley finally got back in it. Unreal. Great stuff. Yeah. We're, North, just, we're just trying to get our offense together and play an entire game the way we can. Everybody on our team knows we yeah. can. It's the old saying, some of the coaches say you want to get the offense and the defense to meet and both play good on the same night. Exactly. What about this uh, Northern Guilford forfeit loss? They had the rule, uh, should they have the forfeit for a team playing too many JV players? Should it be a forfeit or be a fine? Just an opinion question. You and I can't determine the outcome. This has already been determined. They've uh, already uh, suffered the loss. What do you think yeah, about something like that? Probably a little bit of both, I would say, but I'm just happy their streak is over. Okay, got the honest opinion out of Kevin Gessman. He's glad to see the streak go down. I would, I would like to play him. I'd like to play we'll them again, too. We'll get on the too. schedule this year and meet him in the playoffs. Boy, hey, it could happen, too, because you look at it. 3A now, they're 3A. Maybe you guys go on a run, do well, make the playoffs. Yeah, in the same division. Slip you in there, 3 double. Because you guys have got to be 3 double A coming out of 4A. You still got to be 3 double A, I would think. I would think so, yeah. That'd be a neat little match. I'm thinking about that. Last year, they played Southern Guilford, I think, about the third or fourth round. Yeah. Southern scored first and Southern scored last, but uh, TJ Logan scored a lot in between. <laughs> yeah, they were out of tear. Nothing was stopping them. What's your favorite college team? Um, 
probably South Carolina. I like their football team, and it's just fun to be able to cheer for guys I know, like yeah. Brock and Clayton. It's got to be a fun experience. People you played against, people you grew up with to some degree, and there they are yeah. on the big field. They'll be playing against teams like uh, already playing teams. What who did they beat that week? Tennessee when he made the uh, Southeastern Conference lineman of the week freshman. Yeah, yeah. Clayton lineman of the week. That was awesome. That's for all. They, That's unreal. They came. They came home and saw and came to our Reynolds game. That's, what I That's heard. when we played. Did they come in the locker room give you guys like a pregame talk? They were talking to me and it was just fun to be able to. I had to motivate you share there. it with them. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said they did something. Maybe they, did they retire their jerseys? Yeah. Or? Brock's jersey got retired because he was a um, wow. four-year starter at Western. Right. He was All-American. I think maybe even two years, but he played in the Under Armour, Under Armour All-American yeah. game and he got number 65 retired. That's at gonna Western. feel good. That's probably one of the few numbers retired there. I would think. It's the second. Second. I Ooh. think the other one was Saunders, maybe. Possibly Saunders, but it, we got to look it up. We gotta look, that's ago. a good one. Long. We got to look it's, that one. I know up. it's number five because I see it in the hallway. Oh, interesting. So football jersey number five retired there too. It is. That may be Saunders. Back in the day, it would have probably been a quarterback, but as time went on, running backs got those lower numbers. Yeah. Next thing you know, a linebacker's wearing number six. Chris <laughs> Register, Dudley. I'm wearing number one right here. You're wearing number one. Amazing. <laughs> yes, sir. You should be a wide receiver. <laughs> Tevin should be throwing you the ball from your wideout spot. Number one, huh? Well, one thing about it, if you play well, you've uh, deserved number one. If you can live up to it, that feels good. It does. It'll make you get even better. Yeah. They can't miss you on the field. <laughs> number one. Be looking for that tomorrow night. All right, what's your favorite pro team? Um, Carolina Panthers. We need to see them doing a little better, okay. though. Hopefully this year they'll pick it up. You know, they should have beaten, definitely should have beaten uh, game one against Seattle, 12-7 loss. If uh, D'Angelo Williams doesn't drop that ball, I think they win the game. Yeah, they've done, fumble. they've done way too many of just throwing games away in the fourth quarter. Had that Buffalo game wrapped up, then they went on and uh, proved there was no doubt against the Giants. What about this guy since you like the Panthers? Have you watched this guy, Greg Hardy, any? Number 76? Um, not too much. Kind of a wild. Who's your favorite guys on there, the linebackers? I, I've liked Cam Newton coming out, but I really like Luke Keekley. I was going to say, you kind of remind me of a Luke <laughs> Keekley guy already. Yeah. Just thinking about that, yeah. He's the way he takes over mm. games. They're still looking back to the preseason game, yeah. looking for him to do that again, but he just took over that game. It's like, I think the third he's like, he's like game. a throwback player to the old guys. Yeah. He just played like, there was a guy named Kuykendall, like a madman flying around the field years ago, all these different crazy linebackers. Like the Remember the Pittsburgh Steelers? Remember about the old linebackers? Yeah. Like Jack Lambert, Jack Hamm, yeah. all yeah, those yeah. Andy Russell guys? That's the way uh, Keekley is. Fun to watch. He is definitely fun to watch. I just I think he doesn't get his. hurt, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Hope he never goes in making tackles with his <laughs> Head down. That was where he, because he loves to stick that head in there. Perfect form tackle. He's next, getting, almost pinched back. Getting the ball out, yeah. Yeah, and they're going for the. To think it's only his second year in the league. I want to see oh, what, yeah. how he ends up in a couple years. Oh, He's going to no be a, The money he is going to be worth as far as his value goes. If he ever decides he wants to leave the Carolina Panthers, exactly. he can just write his ticket. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah, perfect tackler, Luke Keekley. Uh, we talked about college teams. We talked about college teams. Your favorite college team was South Carolina. South Carolina. Who's the top team you think college-wise in the state of North Carolina? Um, well, it's not U not looking like it's going to be UNC this Down year. Down a little bit, right? Right. We'll see who it is. I'm not sure. Let's see. We looked at UNC. They're one and three. Wake Forest is like two and three. We'll see what Duke can do. Yeah, Duke is three I like, and two. I like Duke pretty good, but I've been a Duke basketball fan. I like their football team. So you like football team better? Coming. Their coach is a good coach, yeah. Coach uh, Cutcliffe. He's a very Cutcliffe good coach. Is a Cutcliffe's cool a cool guy. Good coach. Yeah. Kind of a neat, interesting coach. Yeah. Yeah, kind of fun. To it's like a grandfatherly type guy. Well, this is what this guy's got. It seems like he's got a wealth of knowledge in his mind up there. Yeah. And he coached, uh, worked with the Manning brothers, so you know he's legit. Yeah. No doubt about that. He's making that program into something. What about NCA and T3? You know, the Aggies are rolling. I uh, haven't been out to any of their games either. Should. Got to check those guys out. Appalachian's down this year. As you mentioned, Charlotte's kind of on the up. I think no matter what Charlotte does this year, it's going to be a winning year. Yeah. I don't care what the record is. It's going to be a win-win situation for them because they've done a good job, got off to a good start, just got a good program rolling down there. First year should be it's a fun year for him. Kevin Gassman with us, Western Guilford must win on Friday night. Definitely. You can say it in a lot of ways. If some of you say we must win the game, you also say it's a must win situation. Why is it? Um, well, we're looking at a one and five record right now, as you guys know, but 
we've been saying it's a must-win game for a couple weeks now. But this one, we got to start out co off conference with some wins. If we want to make playoffs and even be at the top of our conference, which I think we should be. Simon, the old uh, outdoorsman, used to say fish or cut bait, I guess. Got to make a move right now. Yeah, now or never. Listen, Kevin, thank you so much. Thank Did you. a super job. Kevin Guest was with us. Western Guilford, one of those fine Hornet players from uh, current day. We've had some from former. We used to have a lot of Western guys in here. Tons would have had stagnant brothers. Had a little kid. I think his last name was Easter. A little small return man. Gosh, we had uh, we had the kid who went to Page. It was at Western. We went to Page, wide receiver. Just tons of guys through here. Keep up the good work. We'll see yeah. you tomorrow night.